a financial advisor job is to plan for the worst and then hope for the best. Mm -hmm. If you meet a financial advisor and all they want to talk to you about is how great the stock market is, how much they're going to make you, you know, you know, your rate of return, oh, I'm going to make you this, I can make you that. Well, they're thinking about them, they're not thinking about you, they're trying to sell you. Right. My job is to educate you to help make, make a better decision. Right. So my job is to help you build a plan that good or bad, whatever happens, you know, storm or no storm, we can thrive from here on out, regardless of what happens. Right. Most people are out there and they're just, they're gambling. You see a lot of gamblers now, you know, right. everybody's- Cause the investment is a gamble. It's a gamble, but that you can take the gambling out of it and start making better decisions if you have the right information, mm -hmm. depending on what your risk tolerance is, what your goals is. The longer your goal is, and just say if you're, you know, I'm 39. If my goal is to try 65, I got a little bit of time on my hands, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't have to be as aggressive as somebody that's 60 trying to retire at 65. Right. So that's why it's important to develop a plan that's centered around you. Because you may be saying real estate is a great investment, but I have no idea that you got a pension, that you got a 401k, right. and you got something a trust fund from your mom and daddy coming. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's just me, I ain't got no investments, no trust fund, mm -hmm. you know, no 401k or pension, um, I might not even be making the same decisions that you make. But that's where we make the mistakes. We hear what everybody else is doing and we're trying to copy and imitate that, not knowing the backstory. Right. You know, that's the worst thing that can happen because everybody's selling you the good. You look on social media, I see it all the time, you know, you know, invest in this day trading club and you pay $5,000 and join our club and we're going to teach you how to trade. And I'm like, well, if they was doing that good, they wouldn't be doing it for you. They'd be on Wall Street doing it for a company making billion dollars a year. Okay. Real talk. What are we doing in the black community? The number one consumer of a Mercedes Benz. Us. Us. The number one consumer of a Gucci and a Louis Vuitton. Us. And they don't even advertise. Why is it that in the black community, we are always the number one consumer, but we're not the number one creators? So you just said it, the fact that there's consumers and creators for so long, we assume success based on consumption. Mm.